I'm gonna show you how to build ChatGPT from scratch using any open source model that you want. Olama is the easiest way to run large language models on your computer and build incredible applications on top of them. Olama powers you to run multiple models in parallel. It absolutely blew me away when I first saw it. So I'm gonna show you that too. So. Let's go. So this is the Olama homepage, olama.ai. And all you need to do is click download. Now, right now it's only for Mac OS and Linux, but they are making a Windows version and it's coming soon. But you could probably use WSL for Windows to get it working on Windows if you wanna use it right now. So just click download and once you do that, just open it up, that's it. You're done. And once you open it up, you're gonna see this little icon in your taskbar right there. That's it. That's how lightweight it is. And everything else is done through the command line or in code itself. So if you click over to this little models link, you can see the models that are available. And they have all the most popular open source models right now. Here's Code Llama, here's Llama 2, Mistral, and they have a ton. So go ahead and look through it. Here's Zephyr, here's Falcon. They even have Dolphin 2.2 Mistral. So they really do have a ton of great models that you can use. And and they're adding more all the time. So now I'm gonna show you how to run it through the command line. Then I'm gonna show you having multiple models up and running, ready to go at the same time. And then we're gonna actually build something with it. Okay, so now that we have Olama running in our taskbar, all we have to type is Olama run and then the model name that you wanna run. And so we're gonna run Mistral. Now I already have this downloaded, but if you don't, it will download it for you. So then I just hit enter and that's it. We have it up and running. Let's give it a test. Tell me a joke and look how fast that is. Why was the math book sad? Because it had too many problems. So perfect. And it is blazing fast. And that is a function of both Olama and Mistral. But let me blow your mind now. I'm gonna open up a second window. I'm gonna put these windows side by side. And now I still have Mistral running and now I'm gonna use Olama run Llama 2. And now I'm gonna have Llama 2 running at the same time. Now. I have a pretty high-end Mac, but the way it handles it is absolutely blazing fast. So we have Mistral on the left, we have Llama 2 on the right. I'm gonna give them a prompt that requires them to write a long response and do it both at the same time, and let's see what happens. Okay, so on the left, I'm writing, write a thousand word essay about AI. And then on the right with Llama 2, write a thousand word essay about AI. So the first thing is, let's trigger Mistral, and then at the same time, I'm gonna trigger Llama 2. And so. Let's see what happens. All right, on the left side, it goes first and it is blazing fast. It is writing that essay about AI. On the right side, Llama 2 is waiting. And as soon as it's done, it starts writing it with Llama 2. How incredible is that? So it swapped out the models in a mere maybe one and a half seconds. It is absolutely mind-blowing how they were able to do that. So I had Mistral run it on the left, Llama run it on the right, and they just ran sequentially. You could have four, eight, ten, as many models as you want running at the same time, and they'll queue up and run sequentially. And the swapping between the models is lightning fast. And you're probably asking yourself, okay, that's really cool, but when would this be useful? Well, I can think of two use cases. One, just being able to have the right model for the right task is incredible. This allows us to have a centralized model that can almost act as a dispatch model, dispatching different tasks to the models that are most appropriate for that task. And what does that remind us of? Autogen. We can have a bunch of different models running with Autogen, all running on the same computer powered with Olama. And since Autogen runs sequentially, it is actually a perfect fit for that kind of work. And there we go. There's two of them. So now that you can see that, you can have as many open as you want. I'm gonna close Llama 2, and let's say we wanna adjust the prompt of the system message. We can easily do that. Let me show you how to do that now. So I switched over to Visual Studio Code, and what we're gonna to need to do is create what's called a model file. And so to start the model file, we write from and then Llama 2. And we're gonna change that to Mistral because that's the model we're using right now. I click Save, and it recognizes this as Python, which is why you're seeing all those underlines, but it's not Python. And I'm gonna leave it as plain text for now. And then we can set the temperature right here. So let's set the temperature to 0.5 and then we can set the system prompt and the one in the example is you are Mario from Super Mario Brothers answer as Mario the assistant only so let's do that let's see if it works so now that we have this model file okay so we're back in our terminal and now we have to create the model file and so what this is doing is it's creating a model a profile of a model using that model file so it says olama create mario dash f and then we point to the model file and then hit enter and there we go parsing model file 
while looking for the model, so it did everything correctly. Then we do Olama Run Mario. Hit enter, and there it is, up and running. Who are you? I am Mario, the assistant. It's great to meet you. How can I help you today? Tell me about where you live. Okay, so now it's gonna answer as Mario. And that's it, and we can give it complex system prompts if we want, and we could do all the other customizations that we wanna do in that model file. And another nice thing is Olama has a ton of integrations. So here's web and desktop integrations. We have an HTML UI, a chatbot UI. We have all these different UIs. We have terminal integrations. We have different libraries, including Langchain and Llama Index. And then we have a bunch of extensions and plugins. So we can use like the Discord AI bot, for example. All of these are really, really easy to use. But I think I wanna do that all myself. Let's build on top of Olama now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a new folder for this project. So let's right click, create a new folder, and I'm gonna call it Open Chat because we're making a ChatGPT clone that's using open source models. Next, I opened up Visual Studio Code, opening the Open Chat folder. So there's nothing in it yet, but we're gonna put something in it. So we're gonna create a new Python file. We'll save it, we'll call it main.py in open chat. Okay, so let's do something really simple first. We're just gonna generate a completion, which means get a response. And since we're doing this in Python, we're gonna need two things. We're gonna need to import requests and import JSON, these two libraries. All right, and then we have the URL and it's local host because this is all running on my local computer and we're gonna use port 11434. We're gonna hit the API and the generate endpoint. We have our headers right here and then our data. We're not gonna use Llama 2. We're actually gonna be using Mistral 7 be, and I think that's the right syntax, we'll try it. And then the prompt will be, why is the sky blue? Just as a test. And then we're gonna ask request to do a post to the URL with the headers and the data. We're gonna collect the response. If we get a 200, we will print it. Otherwise, we're gonna print the error. Let's see if this works. I'll save and I'll click play and let's run it. All right, Mistral 7B not found. So I think maybe if I just delete that part and try again, let's see. Okay, interesting. So it looks like it streamed the response because we got a ton of little pieces of it. Let's see how we can put that all together now. Okay, looking at the documentation, it says right here, a stream of JSON objects is returned. Okay, so then the final response in the stream also includes additional data about the generation. Okay, so we get a bunch of information. And if we don't wanna stream it, we actually just turn stream false. So let's do that. So right here, I'm gonna add stream false. And then let's try it again. Let's see what happens. Oh, false is not a string. Okay, fixed it and let's run it again. It looks like false needs to be capitalized. Okay, push play, and it looks like it worked that time. Here we go. The sky appears blue because of a phenomenon called Rayleigh scattering. This occurs when, okay, there we go. We got it, absolutely perfect. So I don't really want all of this additional information. What I really want is just the answer. So now let's make that adjustment. Okay, so I made a few changes here. First we get the response text, then we load the JSON, then we parse the JSON right here, then we get the actual response, the response from the model from this JSON, then we print it. Let's try one more time. There it is, perfect. Now we have the response. Okay, now that we got the basics working, let's add a Gradio front end so we can actually use it in the browser, and then we're gonna make sure that the user can go back and forth and actually have a conversation. All right, funny enough, I'm actually gonna use the Mistral model to help me write this code. So that's what I've done. I basically pasted in the code that I had and said, let's add Gradio. And then let's also allow for a back and forth between the user and the model. So it generated this generate response method. Okay, so I moved a bunch of stuff into this generate response method, including this data object. And then the response comes through through here. So everything is gonna run through this generate response method from now on. Then we're gonna actually open up Gradio. So we have gr gradio.interface and we're gonna have this function generate response response, the input is going to be the prompt that somebody enters, and then the output will be the function response. So let's run it. Let's see what happens. Then we launch it. All right, here we go. There's the local URL with it running. Let's click on it. We're gonna open it up and here it is. We have a working Gradio interface. Let's make sure it works now. Tell me a joke. Here it is. Why was the math book sad? Because it had too many problems. In just a few minutes, we were able to build our own ChatGPT powered by Mistral. This is absolutely incredible. But Let's not stop there. Let's take it a little bit further because I don't think it has any memory of the previous conversations that we've had. So let's say, tell me another one. Let's see if it actually works. Here, so it's giving me something completely different now. So 
let's make sure it has the history of the previous messages, as many as it can fit in there. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna store the conversation history, and we're gonna try to store as much as we can and fit it into the model. And I'm sure there's better ways to do this, but we're just gonna keep it simple and just assume we can store as much of the memory as we want. Obviously, it's gonna get cut off when we hit that token limit. So let's add conversation history right here as an array. And then the first thing we're gonna do when we go to generate a response is append the conversation history. So conversation history dot append and then we're going to add the prompt. Then the next thing we're going to do is add a new line and we're going to join by this new line, the conversation history, and then we're going to add it to full prompt. So it basically takes the entire conversation history and puts it in this full prompt. We're going to pass in the full prompt now just like that. And then the last thing we need to do is when we get the full response, we wanna add that to the history. So down here, when we get the response, right before we return it, we're gonna add conversation history dot append and then the actual response. And then I'm gonna save. So let's quit out of Gradio, clear, and then hit play. There we are, let's open it up. All right, now tell me a joke. Why don't scientists trust atoms because they make up everything? Very funny, another one. And let's see if it knows what I'm talking about now. What do you get when you mix hot water with salt? A boiling solution. There it is. Now it has the history of the previous messages powered by open source models, completely written from scratch by myself or yourself. So now you know how to build with Olama. If you want me to do an even deeper dive and continue to build something more sophisticated out, let me know in the comments. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.